Okay, we are on, dude. Fashionably late, but we are here. Hmm. Let me get started here. All right. Welcome to another episode of the Nissan Nerd Podcast. Starting off a little late here today. I'm going to open up the private chat here, Mike, and see what we got going on tonight. It is 316 of 21. Getting out of 2020 and cracking open the bottle on 2021. So far, nothing has bitten us this year. We're heading out pretty strong. We've had a hell of a couple weeks. Um, a lot of stuff is starting to open back up. We uh, actually went out to one of our first car events for the year. Yep. Um, we're going to talk about that here a little bit today. We've got a lot of Nissan news, updates that are coming your way. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and get into it, Mike. Let's talk about everything. But first, yep. how was Hold your up. weekend? <laughs> My weekend was great, man. Um, I actually took a, a minute away from the uh, the Nissan world, and I actually spent two days out in the sun uh, getting my motorcycle license. So... I was gonna say you look a little leathered. <laughs> <laughs> can you? See, I don't know if you can tell, man. Yeah, I got a line, dude. So you went and got a motorcycle license? Well, I did all the training. Yeah, I had to go. You know, there was a really very. Tell yeah. me about the training. What what does that entail? So the majority of it was actual um, hands-on, you're behind a bike. You're hands-on and... a behind on a bike? <laughs> so you, were you riding the B seat? Is that what's going down? No, 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 no. I was, they, they actually, the, this, the class provides you with a bike uh, that's, if, you, if it falls, it falls, you know. It's a very, very small bike, but uh, essentially they, they teach you about certain courses, certain maneuvers, and uh, at the end, you got to take a, an assessment. And after that, um, uh, as long as you pass, you get your uh, certificate that you can take to DMV and get you uh, set up. You know what I mean? So uh, it feels pretty good. I thought it was going to be one of those grab, sit on the back. No, 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 not at all, not at all, not at all. Uh, but uh, wasn't too bad. Um, I, I am legit now. And, You're legit. Uh, You're not a, a dirty uh, night street rider without a license anymore. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not riding dirty anymore. You the, you know? What is it? A class M license? Is it class M? Yeah, it is. Mm. Um, it, or, it's definitely due. You know, I had just gotten this bike not too long ago, but you know, most of my time has been uh, small neighborhood streets, just trying to get used to uh, riding and you know um, uh, the hand good. controls and all that. So we're good now. We're good now. It's legit. I feel really confident, and now I can actually ride with my buddies uh, legitimately. So I'm. Um, I'm I'm happy for that. So, like, so when do you join the Sons of Anarchy? When does that kick in? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, they kick they kicked out, man. They kicked me out. They kicked you out. They kicked no. me out, man. Uh, I'm I'm now part of the Wild Hogs. Yeah. The wild. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Biker Boys or something like that? Biker Boys or oh, uh, man? There's so many crews and tags whatever hollywood's dishing out you know <laughs> but are you gonna get the little vest with the oh is it I, I always see guys riding around and then they have like a bulletproof vest which doesn't make sense to me i mean apparently there are more chances of getting shot on a bike versus falling off a bike and needing leather protection i would imagine kevlar being more durable than any sort of foam packaging that they're going to put inside a, a motorcycle jacket you know that that seems kind of cool though it's probably more but, rebellious but i mean it's just right here so i mean let's talk about it yeah. like that if you fall off a bike and mm -hmm. you're falling and we obviously went with the, the armor for the body. So people are supposed to identify you by your nipples. <laughs> but, yeah. Cause you know, uh, granted I have a helmet though, but uh, for those who don't, yeah, their, their teeth profile <laughs> is gone now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the your, your teeth are, are bound up in a powder. I was like, yeah. all right. So, okay. So are we, <laughs> do we have uh, comments on? Uh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Well, tell you what, let's go ahead and get started here, man. Uh, what I want to do real quick uh, before we get started uh, is just to give you guys a quick recap of what's going to be happening tonight. First thing, Nissan will be making a breakthrough in thermal efficiency, their latest announcement. Miles and I, we're going to address a wild rumor happening about the next generation Z car. And we're going to recap rounds one and two of Nissan's participation in Formula E. Uh, coming up here on the Nissan Nerd Podcast. Stay with us.
Man, we just man, we're getting all the mileage we can out of that song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I am. Well, it's going to be one of our own, man. I, I feel pretty good about it. I don't know. Oh yeah. What was it? What did we say when we first started this thing? I was like, we had no money for, uh, we had no budget for music, we no so budget. we were gonna do the, uh, what is it? The uh, oh, royalty free. Yeah, we were well, oh, no, 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 royalty the kazoo, free. The kazoo and the uh, little we slide kazoo, whistle. We had a slide whistle. We've yeah, come a long yeah. way. And what did we say? We the didgeridoo was our backup. Yes, and we knew a was. guy. Well, we knew a didgeridoo guy. We had a but didgeridoo had said, guy. But I had said didgeridoo don't. That's what I had said after that. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome oh yeah oh yeah man hey so uh go ahead what do you got no no go ahead get it i was before we get started i did want to ask you you've asked me about my weekend i want to ask about your weekend i saw a few facebook posts that you had put out regarding your 620 project oh, uh yeah, you want to yeah, give everybody yeah. an update of what's what's going on in your world uh sure i mean if you care yeah why not um yeah. so i'll uh, show you what i got going on Sure. But um, yeah, I, I have this 620 project. I, I, I think I've, maybe I've talked about it once or twice. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a, a little uh, Datsun 620 that I'm trying to shoehorn in a uh, Nissan VG30 um, DET into it. So it's mm -hmm. it's coming along decently. But um, yeah, it's it's I right. it's not too <laughs> bad. But uh, the big shout out to um, a big shout out to um, uh, Babani Customs for helping me out with all the custom suspension. Don't look at it too closely. Yeah, there's rusted spots and blah, 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 blah. But um, yeah, I mean, I blasted everything and unfortunately oxygen does get to some stuff, but put in some custom mounts, put in a whole custom five link suspension system, throwing in um, all kinds of garbage, man. So you really cut out a lot of uh, unnecessary bracketry because this obviously the VG30 engine never came in the 620. This is a no. custom engine oh, no. uh, engine swap that that not very many people do, right? Yeah. Um, so I I mean I wanted it to look fairly stock, but I wanted it to handle. Um, and so we're kind of sticking that big old monstrosity into it. So you would, I thought it was going to be a lot worse than what it was, um, quite honestly. Um, yeah. You know, I was expecting more pushback. I mean, don't, granted, it hasn't – a lot. the pushback still can happen at this point. But mm -hmm. for the most part, it, it's been going pretty darn well. I've had some great people um, with a lot of skill sets have been helping me. Um, against the grain, Rob Curtis over there, he's been helping me out with a lot of stuff. Uh, he did yep. – the uh, mounts. Um, I had uh, Sweet uh, Customs is a local uh, fabricator who helped me out with some stuff. A lot of friends uh, out there. Um, the guys over at Babani Customs set me up with the suspension, which you can't even think about doing this uh, kit without that um, without getting rid of the torsion bars and everything else. If you're going to mm -hmm. do and keep all the torsion bars, my advice from sitting there measuring it out and sitting in the garage looking at it for two months um <laughs> stick with stick with a four cylinder man stick with the that uh that uh, that original four uh l or i would go with like the uh the ka or an sr option or you know some other four cylinder in line like that um four cylinder in line four cylinder that's going to give you the option to do that because and it is it was just um a little painstaking to to fit in the six and you can fit in the six from the z31 which is that single overhead cam but yeah. it's the dual overhead cams that really gives you the fight and uh um, uh. you know that was where we uh uh where we really had a lot of uh, pushback and figuring out what the hell we were gonna if we were gonna do it if it was one big massive mistake but you know that was the whole point of buying this car is to um is to get that in there and then uh yeah. the headers <laughs> are gonna have to be custom and then drive shaft and we'll figure out the rest but yeah if you're asking yeah. that's uh that's what's going on in my world but uh that's what i'm just messing with before i can officially move on to something else i got my i got my eye out for different things right now still hunting for a 510 one of these days maybe i'll find one um if an s12 decides to follow my lap Mm. You know, one of these days, maybe I'll take it just because it's, I could take one of these VG30. What, I'll, I'll put it this way. Whatever I get is getting this exact same plant, plant because I've got millions of these engines, yeah. millions of these transmissions, <laughs> rear end subframes. I got it all. So guess what? Anything that yeah. I ever put into another car is always going to have a VG30 D because I know the engine backwards and forwards. So Miles Hall, AKA Mr. VG, pretty much. <laughs> Mr. VG. VG. Mr. VG. So yeah. you need to get your a uh, nice little patch or some sort of a shirt. I guess, for you, man. you know, yeah. it's such a, such a painstaking 
um, you know, engine to work on. Uh, and I've worked on quite a few of them. I mean, uh, yeah. the SR, uh, the KA24, believe it or not, is actually one of my favorite engines. Um, it's very simplistic, but mm -hmm. it's just, you know, it doesn't deliver until you really kind of start digging into it. In my opinion, I know some KA guys are going to hunt me down and beat me um, <laughs> for saying that, but you know, yeah. the reality is it just, it, it wasn't giving me what I was looking for. So, I mean, it's, um, I mean, just to put it, this is just what I have in one spot in my house. Just this is all stuff for CAD plate, um, you know, and uh, guys over at EP Racing have been helping me. They're kind of restoring the entire engine for me. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll probably farm it out maybe once or twice for a few other things. But I'm going to try to do as much as I possibly can myself. Um, I'd like to think I'm pretty good at a lot of this stuff. But as you go on, you know, if if I could give advice to anybody for, for projects out there, if you get to a point you don't feel comfortable with, with doing something find somebody to to farm stuff out to that you feel comfortable that's in and in, in the community at that so just always try to make sure that um you can uh you can find somebody out there that you're uh comfortable with uh subletting stuff out to and uh keep uh keep support in the community so anyway uh, enough Got about it. me but <laughs> For those of you that are on Facebook uh, Live, thank you for joining us. We are uh, here. This is the Nissan Nerds Podcast. Again, my name is Mike DeLashmet. Uh, if for those who are just jumping in, uh, across, the guy across me with the, the the hair slicked back, looked like he's auditioning for the role of uh, Greasy Thug Number Four in the latest uh, whatever oh. movie you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see what's going down. Yeah. You look like John Leguizano's goofy cousin or something. <laughs> it could have gone two ways. You could have taken it the high road, but you took the low road. All right, I see where you're going. Yeah. And you know what we haven't talked about tonight? We haven't uh, we haven't seen what we're drinking tonight, have we? You're absolutely right, man. What are you What are you drinking tonight, man? Oh, I am drinking. Let's see here. I am rocking a Nebraska brewery IPA. Ipa, an Ipa, right. an I Nebraska brewery. Yeah, is it but, a particular flavor or <laughs> strawberry? Uh, let's see here, oh. uh, India Pale Ale. So now the cool thing about this, one thing, pop tops, the whole thing. So oh wow, mm. so the yeah. can becomes its own cup there, right? Well, got my old oh, school. Oh. Yeah, that's some old school. Uh, they call it the Nissan Collection. Um, okay. when you buy the t-shirts and the pins and the golf clubs and the blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's all, it's all Nissan collection. Nice. Good start. Uh, hit me. Yeah. You're right. Go. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, well, I'm going to go ahead and do a repeat of, uh, last time we were here. I got some, uh, deep Eddie's, uh, lemonade vodka all right, and my good. own, my own sweet tea that I make for myself. So I went ahead and got myself an Arnold Palmer, uh, okay. Well, let's get ah. into news. We got a lot to cover tonight. A lot of stuff to go over. Mm -hmm. All right. We do. Uh, let me get my set, let me get my uh, my cup settled here. Uh, before we do, Miles, let's go ahead and do it. Gun by. Got it. Clink. All right. Brand out. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into the news, Miles. You ready for this one? I'm ready. Let's party. Let's go ahead and start now. We're going to start here with a few uh, a few articles. You know, the last time that we had our, our episode, we had a lot of people uh, interact with us through the comments. And for those who are on Facebook, feel free to join and give us your comments uh, down below. We'll be sure to go ahead and share them uh, on the podcast, uh, throughout the podcast. So feel free to go ahead and, and add your comments. So, but one of the comments that was made uh, at our last episode, people are just dying for more and more Z contents on the next generation Z car. Really? So I've got, yeah. Uh, I mean, right. obviously, obviously this car is just uh, the, the latest uh, with Nissan and uh, people obviously are diehard Z fans. So I'm going to go and share a few, a few articles uh, uh -huh. from them. The first one was a wild rumor that came out of uh, multiple news outlets. The one that I have here is from Road and Track. I'll go ahead and share my screen on this one, which is... A wild rumor that says that the Nissan 400Z could have a power to weight ratio uh, better than most other cars, in this case specifically Lotus Evora GT, amongst many, many others. So uh, I'll do a quick recap of what's going on here. And let me go ahead and say this is a very, very wild rumor. Um, there is a, this comes from the world of video games. 
essentially. Uh, specifically, there's a game that's available on Xbox and PS4 and all them. It's called Project Cars 3. And when you get onto this video game here, the next generation Z car is in that uh, racing catalog. When you want to pick whatever car that you want, the next generation Z car is there already. There are some specs in the game that were mentioned. And uh, this is where a lot of speculations coming out. Again, I think for those who wrote this article, for those reading this article, us included, this is a lot of wishful thinking. I certainly hope, uh, I'm sure you would too, that the next generation Z has these specs though. But they're both seen here, uh, 444 horsepower at a weight of 3250, uh, 3,250 pounds. That is actually currently lighter than the 370Z and 444 horsepower is definitely a huge boost uh, from the current Z car, that's uh, the 370. So, um, well, I think in, anything from the internet's got to be true, right? So, <laughs> well. exactly right. And that's why we say these are very, very wild rumors, though. But again, uh, this sparks the imagination. Uh, everybody's talking about it, though. 440. So, if they're saying they're going to use a twin turbo V6 that we think they're using, the VR30, 444 horsepower. I believe is achievable. I mean, this engine is currently used in the Q60 Red Sport, currently making 400 horsepower, 444 horses. That's an extra, well, 10% in power. That is a pretty big boost, though. But uh, I do know with the right supporting mods, you can reach that number. Uh, I am confident in that. Uh, and then they're saying that the car is lighter, uh, less than 3,300 pounds. I remember when we were just getting started on the three on the next generation Z car. They the idea that the car was going to be lighter was already kind of mentioned. So of, of the two facts here, power or weight, I really think that the, that the weight of this car is probably more factual uh, than the, the power that Nissan's going to give us from the factory. But um, what do you think? Uh, how possible do you think these numbers are to uh, when the next car comes out? Well, like anything else, you know, if you can shave down weight, you can get miles per gallon up, which is important, I suppose. I mean, we are going to start getting into that part where oil is going to be, you know, and miles per gallon are going to be a very important topic here soon. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, we could potentially see a crisis here coming up around the bend. But, you know, you always have to speak that to make sure you're competitive in the future. But as far as power, I mean, yeah. I feel like. If this if this power plant is based off of, and I really think it's going to be based off of the 370Z platform, yeah. in my opinion, I think it's ultimately going to be the 370Z platform, which is an amazing platform to begin with. I mean, yep. it's it's practically it's already doing amazing things in racing competitions. Um, I just don't think that the 370s been out there enough for um, uh, being fully taken advantage of. What well, like it it it. It just is now. So if we're starting to see a platform right. with that caliber mm -hmm. just being adapted or adjusted in, in certain aspects, like increasing rigidity, lightening up the car like we had talked about in previous articles, like some of those panels where they were taking the aluminum and changing them out for the carbon fiber pieces, mm -hmm. perhaps that's going to be an option too as well. It, it's hard to say. But, you know, even the, even the, the power plant itself. You know, I don't know if anybody's had an opportunity to weigh any of that stuff, but potentially yeah. when you take a power plant out, you know, you start cutting a few pounds out of it. Um, mm -hmm. It could be there, man. It's hard to say. You know, I, I personally, I, I know when um, we were talking about like focus groups and, and things like that, you know, when the people ask me my opinion, like, hey, what would you like in the next Z? It's like, make it a tad lighter, you know, just, I, I don't need. I don't need butt warmers, you know, like I really don't need, you know, uh, it's true. I, I, you know, I don't need the silly stuff like that. I really don't need the, uh, the fancy rear wipers and the defoggers for the mirrors. Like, I, yeah. I don't want that stuff. Like it's... I'd rather have the, the, I'd rather have the performance. I'd rather have that car pushed as far as you can for mm -hmm. a V6 manual platform and keep it true to the Z. And I feel like they, they, they were really listening this time. You know, we've, um, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there's been other people in focus groups before and you just, you, you don't feel like your voice is being heard, but it's different when you actually go there and then people are like actually listening to you. It makes a difference. You know? so, oh, absolutely. Um, uh, there course, is, the, what's that price point? 80,500. Now, come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to be that. I think realistically we're going to be in the uh, out of base model, probably. Uh, <sighs> Even now, the current 370Z is, uh, let's just call it 30,000, but they're competing with even the, uh, again, the Supra, uh, the Force, you know, those Supras are ranging between 45 and uh, 60,000. I think in the Z, honestly, there's going to be a, a pretty big jump, I think. If you're in the mid to high, probably it's going to be about 40,000, I think, for a Thanks. base model. Man, I hate to say it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm typically I'm out of touch. I always want things for the lowest price possible. I mean, who doesn't? But I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you. I remember sitting in those and they were talking about price points at like um, high threes, and I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. if you hit me with a high three, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, you know. But if you knew you were getting a lot for your money, and that's the big thing. It's like if you're putting that much development, like we hope they are, yeah. you know, um, you're hoping that uh, you're getting that because you know people are going to say they're going to say oh three. It, it, I'm not going to I'm not going to back talk it because we don't uh, bad talk it because we don't have a lot of data. So we're right. going to make a lot of assumptions here, but can the power be achieved? Yeah. Can the oh, yeah. power to weight ratio or can the curb weight be achieved? Yeah, great. Yeah. How, if is is it going to handle? I think most definitely. I I, I think oh, gonna they're going to dump a ton into actually getting this thing to handle uh better and I I, I think it's going to be an impressive car all around. I really think it's going to be a game changer. You know? Absolutely. Uh, when it comes to power, too, you're talking about the, uh, again, let's say even if it's remotely close to what this game is advertising, mm -hmm. you know, everybody, uh, a lot of people compare this, the direct competitor to the Z would be, potentially be the, the Toyota Supra. We, we know that the next, uh, gen, the next uh, I think, 2021 or 2022 Supra here is going to have about the high 300s, like 380 horses. And they know that the price point is was what is it now sixty thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And just and just to compare though, so yeah, let's say the Z. Let's just say we know that the Q60 makes four hundred horsepower. So let's just call it that. Even if the next generation Z has four hundred horsepower, and it sells for forty five thousand dollars, at least from um, the sales point and the price point, it's gonna it's going to. Uh, blow the Toyota Supra away. There's probably a lot of enthusiasts right now either saving their money, preparing for the Z, or who have a Supra who just can't wait to sell it to get another Z, <laughs> to get the next Z. I could tell you right now, like, I'm not really buying too much right now because I just want to see what happens. Um, yeah. And I'm not saying I, I'm, I'm going to jump and I'm going to lurch and pick up one, but yeah. I'm pretty darn interested. I mean, it, we're not going to see him until, uh, well, it's still up in the air, but... Yeah. Realistically, you and I both know we're probably not going to see this till the beginning of next year. So, absolutely, absolutely. So, and so we've got a lot of time to kind of put some coin away, you know, um, yes. sell that, sell that, uh, that doggy coin, and get up on your, <laughs> get up on your stocks, and just uh, and put down your, uh, put down your payment, and, get, and see what well, you got going on. So, absolutely. Well, you said speaking of listening, how you said Nissan has their ears to the ground. They're really trying to get the feedback from us as consumers. Uh, get into our next article. There was a Z focus group. Did you get this email? I received this email. I, did. I think you did too, right? Yeah. Okay. So we know uh, we've said here pe previously in in uh, the podcast and previous episodes that Nissan has performed focus groups to gain enthusiasts' uh, thoughts and opinions about what the next Z car should be. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we're here to report though that Nissan is still doing that, even though the Z Proto. Uh, is out and we've seen it. Nissan is still conducting focus groups. Uh, Miles, do you want to tell us some more about this? Yeah. So um, I actually got uh, an email here recently um, yep. from uh, from a group called PRC. I'll throw it up at you real quick. But mm -hmm. yeah, so they uh, they hit me up with a group. I'm I'm pretty sure a lot of us did. But for those that didn't get it, I got this and I was like scam. But then it was like hold <laughs> up. Uh, it had a little bit more for me uh, than what I was. Uh, it was like it like it was talking to me. So if it was uh -huh. ever going to scam me, this is a damn pretty good scam. So it said, "Hey, yep. we're going to do a two, uh, a two to two and a half hour focus group talking about. Uh, we want to talk to Nissan Z owners. Um, so apparently they're going to be doing it March twenty second, March twenty third. So if you're one of those uh, lucky people who have." Uh, who've gotten selected for it or have been approached and been lucky enough to get a call back. Great. Now, keep in mind, we don't know if this is a scam. <laughs> so take that with a, a word of caution. I did call the number. I left a message for the lady. Uh, no response back yet at this time. Um, so 
uh, for the few po few and quite a few people I know, I mean, something like this comes out in the community. We all know about it because we're a pretty tight knit family. So uh, once it hit the streets, um, we uh, we definitely uh, I, I knew about it. And I saw that other people saw it, and I don't yeah. know if we blew up their spot, so to speak. So uh, yeah. we, you know, the cat's out of the bag that the uh, that this focus group is out there. So yeah. We're we're Absolutely. nerds, right? And we all talk. We're chatty Cathy's. Meow, meow, meow. Yeah. <laughs> so in our sewing groups on Facebooks, yeah, guess what? Yeah. I received this email as well. And I know that they're saying that this focus group is being scheduled for later this month. So for those who are uh, listening and for those who have been uh, selected and to actually be in the call, to be in the focus group, let's say we could try to get some feedback from them in the next episode. I'd love to hear more about it. Uh, I'm hoping, again, you two, I've called twice leaving messages to be a part of that focus group, uh, whether or not it's booked or not. I, mean, I don't know how you book a, a, a focus web group? focus group. It's on the web. I mean, there's not like yeah. physical seats. But, it's probably uh, like Willy Wonka tickets at this point, like, you know, like 10 special boys and girls, you know, yeah. and then that's pretty much the end of it, you know? Yeah, so. I'm, I'm pretty sure like the, the focus, the, the consulting company who's performing this, if this is true, right? They didn't know what they got themselves into. They're no. like, "Oh yeah, ten people. Yeah, right. You just see just the wave yeah. of response." We're gonna be outside their got. building. Listen yeah. to what I have to say. But they're like, "We don't have the bandwidth. We we uh, we don't know. We're closed." <laughs> yeah, right. No joke. <laughs> well, that's very cool that we got it out there. So I'm glad you got it. I'm glad I got it. But again, either it's the best scam that we've seen in a while. Yep. Or it's true, and they're actually listening. So. So time will tell. We'll see how that goes. Let's follow up on that next next uh, episode. I think it'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> so, um, okay. So we've got one last ep uh, topic. Uh, we got quite, we got quite a few. Oh, well, yes, yes, yes. But regarding the 370Z oh, uh, yeah. or the Z car in general, do you want to take this next one? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so for those that don't know, if you've been under a rock on the 370Z, um, there was a, and give me the, uh, give me the steering wheel. All right, cool. There you go. So Peter Brock, um, actually did uh, a few 370Zs and he actually has one up for sale on Bring a Trailer. Um, so this, uh, edition's a little bit different. Um, this is actually their version of it. Um, and as you can see, it's styled a little bit differently from the 50th anniversary that were put out. So again, for those that don't know, there was 50 uh, that were put out by uh, Nissan uh, back in 2020. We saw the car, um, you know, it had some interesting styling cues. Remember, we saw the seats and obviously the red and the white was a throwback to that. But they, uh, but Peter Brox took it, you know, the, being the styling guru and the whiz that he is, um, he, he said, you know what, I want to I want to put my own hand at it. So apparently they had a few of these vehicles and this unit, um, they actually uh, put some, uh, some more of that Peter Brock magic too. Um, so the car itself pretty much is the same one that Nissan got, but there are some styling mm -hmm. cues um, that are definitely changed and some of the badges changed. I totally am digging the way they did the door BRE Nissan logo in the middle. I think yeah. that's just super cool. You know, the whole um, 50th anniversary throwback to kind of, I guess, remember how the, um, the old, uh, the, the, I guess the black and the gold or that really to me, the Z31 that uh, the anniversary edition Z31 where they did the, uh, the uh, little, yep. I guess it's a, uh, what is that? that maple leaf? That's not maple leaf. That was leaf. the 50th anniversary of Nissan, not the Z, but yeah, I do remember that gold. It was a gold and black. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. So they had this version that they put out and uh, Peter Brock actually uh, put some love into it, did some badging. Um, you don't really see it, but there's actually some, uh, some, uh, some black accents on the lower part. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then they added some additional touches and details. They also put a badge on this dash. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's about right there. Um, so yeah, it comes with quite a bit. So to have a one-off vehicle like this is pretty amazing. Um, yeah. And especially to come from the man himself. So yeah. And for those that don't know, get up on your Peter Brock um, uh, data and if you get a chance, make it to ZCon. I'm pretty sure he's going to be there this year. Um, you can get a chance to meet up with the man himself. And uh, super cool cat, super cool car. Um, again, this car is only is gone in, uh, what is it, two days here. So yep. uh, for those, if you've got the money or the means, hey, why not, yeah. right? Go for it. And the current bid's only $22,000 right now with current three days bid. left. That's current the current bid. Now, it, yes, it, th that 
that price is going to hockey stick that last couple of hours, I'm pretty yeah. sure. But, I mean, that's still for the previous owner being Peter Brock. I mean, that's that's a, a steal of a price. Yeah. So I really hope uh, someone someone uh, special gets that car. And uh, low miles, 166 miles. That's super, yeah. super low. Not driven. It was definitely a trailer queen for a while. So mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure he's going to be looking at that same car for the next 20 conventions. So <laughs> Peter, yeah, <laughs> the guy who bought it. Hey, do you want to sign it again this year? So yeah, but pretty cool, man. I'm um, I, but it's uh, I, but seriously, I did like it. I wish they would have put this one out. I wish they would have consulted him initially, um, him and Morton. And done yeah. something like that on the on those fifty versions, yeah. And had them there, got their input, like maybe uh, like six months or a year before that. Hey, we're going to do a special edition. That would have been cool. This is mm-hmm. this is amazing. But like something like this from the beginning would have got my attention from being one of those fifty people to sign on uh, to pick up the cars initially. So just my two cents. Absolutely. Good All point. Right. Good point, man. What else you got? What else you got? Next up uh, on our uh, news uh, reel that we have here, the Black Edition Nissan Q60 is dead. What? Really? Yeah, a little bit of some bad news here, though. But this comes from Motor Authority. Uh, now, there was a lot of a lot of people were really following this this uh, car when it came out. So it was revealed, uh, unveiled at the uh, 2017 Geneva International Auto Show. This car has packed full of features that are essentially F1 style features. You've got a hybrid uh, system, so it's uh, electric. Not only is the engine, let's just start with the engine first. Twin turbocharged V6. But then you also have hybrid features with a front wheel drive uh, electric motor assist. Uh, You know, when you combine those two, they're having an advertised power output of about 500 horsepower, which is an amazing number. And, uh, you know, pass into 2018, 2019, you know, the Nissan executives say here that they were mulling it over to give production a green light. Well, finally, you know, it's 2021 now. They went ahead and made it official. Hey, we're not going to do it. This is purely just a prototype. And I know a lot of people are, uh, they're let down by this. Uh, some people are surprised, though, uh, to give you kind of give you an idea. Um, we mentioned also here earlier that Infinity is also, you know, we're talking about these F1 style features. Well, you know, Infinity just backed out of F1 uh, for 2021 20, season. You will not see the Infinity logo in F1. Uh, you can see kind of a little bit of this withdrawal, though. Uh, another mention that they mentioned, uh, <laughs> another mention in this article says that the Infinity executive who would, this car was his brainchild. He has since left the company. So um, always the way we always get like somebody that comes up with a cool idea. And then we want to rebrand for luxury. We want to yeah. rebrand for efficiency or economy. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, yeah. can somebody just stay in a job for four years so we can just have <laughs> a project that, you know, instead of these people just step stoning and just they're in, they're out, we can never yeah. get anything with consistency. I mean, thankfully, we're starting to get designs that are interesting, that are eye popping, because guess what? We have to have that stuff if, if we're going to be, if we're going to dig ourselves out of the hole that Nissan was in for the last two years. And, um, you know, yeah. for... And then, you know, all these special projects, the club men, okay, we're going to kill it. You know, the Q60, guess what? We're going to kill it. It's just like, Jesus Christ, guys. Like, I, you know, I don't think our head's been on straight until recently. I, I don't think our head was on straight when we were killing out the IDX, you know? I mean, yeah. the IDX to me still to this day was um, uh, was one of the best cars never made. And I think it even it, you can find tons yeah. of articles. You know, we we we're shooting ourselves in the foot every time we do something like that. You know, we didn't do the club man. I can understand why, but then we're not doing the Q60, and it's just like, uh, okay, you know, you're, we're not helping anything. You know, so absolutely, absolutely. Um, but this was a it, cool idea when I saw it. Oh, I, I loved like, it. Man, that was like a hell of a badass car. You know, even the red editions. You know, those are those are well amazing I'm cars. Glad, I'm glad you mentioned that too because they. Amazing platform. Saying essentially the path of this car, this prototype, it, it, it is living the same life that the the red edition, otherwise known as was it the Eau Rouge, mm, with the Q50. Your French uh, is horrible. Uh, you yeah, are it's so, horrible, man. You're so public school. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but hit you, me up. What you got? But you are right, though. The, the, 
the the black edition Q60 essentially falls to the wayside just like this edition of the Q50. Uh, the Q50, this was revealed in 2014. It was the uh, sedan, Infinity sedan, that had the power plant of a GTR, the R35 GTR, yeah, yeah. which is amazing. It, it got all this public press. It, uh, people loved it, and but it never happened. So, uh, sadly, it, maybe we'll see it in the Nissan Heritage Museum yeah, one but day. On that note, though, I, what you mentioned earlier on the Infinity pulling out of F1, I, yeah. I, it made no sense why we were – I mean, yeah, we had our logo on F1, but I'm sure the dollar trade-off for that was just redonkulous. Like, we were just blowing money like we were at the strip club. Like, <laughs> why? Why? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you already have a luxury brand that is competitive and is doing well. Mm -hmm. Why not just take that brand and offset it with, like, a little bit of an off-road option? Like, they're doing for these off-road uh, um, uh off off road and uh, rallies that they're doing with the Infinity stuff. I mm -hmm. mean, that's amazing. You take that new Araya and you dump that sucker out there on a rally. Guess what? You got the attention that you would. It was just like that. I mean, why can't we get to a, a race on Sunday, sell on Monday up uh, uh, um, mindset again? I mean, yeah. yeah, there's not a whole lot of um, there's not a whole lot of uh, marketing options for for championships because they don't get the they don't get the volume of the movement that like they used to but you know back in the days when the scca was going and you know paul newman decided to get into uh racing on the dotsons i mean he pretty much I, and I, I there's no statistics that exist for this but i can guarantee you once he got into that series and started racing along with those other legends at the time i mean mm -hmm. they brought up that they brought up all that excitement about that and guess what we're still talking about that to this day that was one of the best marketing decisions they could have done but the problem yeah. is we just don't have people that either have the insight or the guts to get it done it's a small amount of of gamble but the payoff yeah. would be that much more if we just had an opportunity to do it. Now, this car, it, it, you have to find your place for it. Why not? Why can't we yeah. just get an option to to get out there and, and do that? I mean, I and, and think about it, too, is that um, the Infinity, let's say they went with it, too. And now when I see the power plant that this car is and I see the uh, the advertised horsepower outfit, my first thought was, okay, well, does this step on the toes of Nissan's unveiling of the next generation Z car? And in some ways, maybe it does. But, I mean, if you just – that's 500 horsepower. That is an insane amount of, of horsepower. I would say at a price point that's in between a Z and in between a GTR, you can easily sell this car. I mean, let's just say the, the, the greatest addition that Nissan gives for the, for the Z car is – what is it? What do you call it? Like $50,000? Let's just say a number there. Yeah. Or even sixty. This one would sell for seventy. I mean, I would see a few people. I mean, granted, uh, seventy seventy is a hard price, but you are getting yeah. a. Um, I, I don't know if there's such a thing as a luxury GTR, but <laughs> I mean, but I, I mean, for that money, it's like you you kind of get to that point. It's like, do I want the badging for the GTR and be cool, or do I want the I'm snooty and I want the Q60 G? So I can understand them wrestling with that identity at that price point, but you know, yeah. I'm like. I don't know if you put this out there in the, yeah. the mid fours or the high fives at a yeah. MSRP and you're still making money at it. I can't see how this thing wouldn't sell like hotcakes, but that's just me. I mean, that's, it, it's a slick yeah. ride, you know, um, let's go to our comments. So we got a few people that were, we do, in. we do. Uh, we've got, uh, from, from Joshua, he says, uh, you know, kind of combining our stories that we, that we've reported here tonight, the BRE edition IDX, would have been so cool. I agree to that. I actually have some ridiculously good news for you. So I reach yeah. out from time to time to a lot of the old designers, see if they want to kind of come on the show and talk. Yeah. Um, so I did some digging. Uh, the actual designer of this vehicle, or the, the they call them principals sometimes. I, I, I Keep in mind, I, I might be getting this wrong, but there's like a, a leader that, that uh, does, um, heads a design program. Yeah. Um, that's a gentleman by the name of David Malcolm uh, Beasley. He actually lives in the UK. Um, him and I um, uh, finally, I, I'd reached out to him some time back and yep. I just told him, I was like, hey, I don't know if you know this. There's like a cult following for your vehicle that was never made. Did you ever want to come and talk on the show? And he says, yeah, I'd love to. Um, yeah. So 
you know, we've had this before where, where people want to kind of come on the show and talk about it and they get busy and, and it's the year. It's the age that we're living in right now. People are really busy, but uh, and they have yeah, to keep, yeah. It, automotive designers right now have to keep busy because there's not a lot of work out right now for anybody. <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah, I mean to 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 give you guys some good news. Um, yeah, David Malcolm Beasley uh, to me made one of the best design Nissan vehicles that was never made, which is the IDX. <laughs> so we're going to try to have him on the program um, and talk yep. about it. Hopefully, that's going to be a great interview. Again, don't hold it to us. Sometimes these interviews yep. fall through for whatever, but we're definitely yep. going to try to push for this one because we are huge fanatics about it. So, um, <laughs> you know, maybe Nissan will listen. Maybe they'll say, hey, you know what? Remember that IDX thing? Apparently, there's yeah. some nerds that want to that think this thing's going to sell. And guess yeah. what? It is going to sell. And guess what? It would have. I will give you my money now if you ever decide to make that damn thing and have a decent power plant in it. Just put the juke motor in it. You just take that thing, throw the yeah. juke motor in it, and just make the car. I'll buy it. It yeah. doesn't even have to have an impressive, um, you know, power plant. You know, you know that drive, I'm cool. Yeah. That car came out when the concept came out in 2013. We're still talking about it. Right? We're, still We're still talking, talking about, about it. it. But if you look at the car, I mean, the design is still relevant. It's not outdated, even by now. It's, it, it's, it would still look futuristic if you dropped that today. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if they stole all the designs off that IDX and said, you know what? We're going to pick and choose out of that project. Kind of like people like when they're like, uh, you know, that I don't really like that salad, but I'm going to take the olives off of it. I'm going to take hmm. the crouton and boom, boom, boom. And you can maybe see that. It's hard. We'll never prove that, but I don't know. We're just talking. Right? So. But Fun fact, Joshua, when the IDX, and you may already know this, but when the IDX was debuted, Peter Brock was the person who debuted that car because the IDX actually is based off of the 510. So, um, nerd, nerd, nerd alert. Yeah, that's us, man. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, a beautiful car, like, man. Yeah, so it's, it's a I... beautiful, beautiful car. It was a damn shame we never made that car. That thing would have that would have rejuvenated Nissan, in my opinion. That would have been the flagship car that we would have sold the piss out of. But whatever, right? Anyway, Absolutely. Moving on. Man. I'm moving on. Get I'm getting depressed. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on here. Uh, I have the next article for you guys. This is regarding um, Nissan. Well, obviously Nissan, but uh, <laughs> next article. Uh, now, multiple outlets came out with this uh, article. And I'll share here. Uh, the one I'm have here is from Road. We're going to talk about nerdy tech stuff right now. This we? is going to. I'm going to do my best to uh, streamline this as best as possible, and I think I'll, I'll do a pretty good job about this. But uh, in the headline, it says here that the Nissan is uh, working on an engine with a 50% thermal efficiency. Uh, it's it's internal combustion engine. But let me go ahead and give you a backstory before we get into that. Go on now. Engines up until now, or engines within the last 50 years, let's just say that, typically operate with a very, very low thermal efficiency. Thermal efficiency means uh, the amount of energy that engine produce, produces versus the amount of energy that actually reaches the road, reaches the wheels. Typically, that number is about a third, about 30%, 30 to 40%. Uh, the rest, all that wasted energy is in the form of heat. The engines get very, very hot. We all know this. So now what Nissan is, is, is claiming is that this engine uh, has 50% thermal efficiency, meaning instead of two-thirds uh, uh, wasted into heat, it's only half. That may not seem like a lot, but in reality, that's a huge, huge uh, like they say, it is a breakthrough uh, for engine development. So um, they're introducing this, and they're calling it Nissan E Power. And um, there, one thing that needs to be clear, and I'll go ahead and scroll down here a little bit on this article, is this engine is not driving the wheels. Even though this engine is going to be super, super efficient. There is no transmission going to this to this uh, this engine. What it is is that this engine is um, operating at a at the optimal engine speed and uh, receiving the optimal amount of load on the engine, and it is essentially powering the uh, electrical generator. Consider this motor that's the most efficient possible actually just generating power for a battery or for an inverter it's gen it's converting gasoline into electric energy that is its sole purpose but because you can control the engine speed because you can control 
the uh, the load that this engine receives, you can then tune it specifically to receive the best type of thermal efficiency possible. So in this case, 50%. And relatively speaking, that is a great, great number. Uh, you're also reducing the uh, CO2 emissions. Now, obviously, cars and the Nissan specifically, too, they are saying that EVs are the, uh, the future. But this is really a uh, bridging the gap until then and also bridging the gap in areas of the country and areas of the world where the electrical uh, charging infrastructure isn't there. Uh, they can still use gas, but receive very, very efficient and electrified powertrains. So there is, you know, over time within the next 30 years, 30 plus years, uh, technology like Nissan ePower is going to be able to, uh, again, fill those gaps, give people electric powertrains, but uh, not rely on these infrastructures of, of uh, charging uh, until they're actually in place. Whew. That was yeah. a lot, huh? That was a lot. Yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> you definitely nerded out. Like you went into like a, I don't know, yeah. like a, a tunnel vision of just nerd them for a second. I was just like, oh, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Okay, you got thirty seconds to wrap it up. Okay, so last thing here, <laughs> uh, Nissan is not. Tell me what that well, sex bot in front of me is doing. Yes, what's, exactly. What's going so on with that? as part of this release that Nissan has given us. It, they do not specify the engine size or the cylinder count or the compression ratio. Uh, we do know that the compression ratio is going to be a very, very high for this optimal thermal efficiency. But we don't. They did not give us uh, the the specifics, though. But they are still uh, developing it, and they're saying that uh, uh, this will be the future. Uh, again, it's called Nissan E Power. Whoa, 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 whoa! Go down there, Kawasaki. What do you see? What do you see? Uh, hold on. Keep going down. Keep going down. Keep going down. Now, right there. Okay. Now, go up. There's a another manufacturer in here that I see. The Mercedes yes. AMG V6. Now, we talked about this. Yep. About what the future of Mercedes was looking like in an episode a couple of times back. And we said that Mercedes has now killed off all of their um, new production and R&D for all their combustion engines in the future. The, which, yeah, that's which true. Means, which means... If you think about it, I'm just mm -hmm. talking about economics here, that all the players and the bright idea thinkers are kind of pulling their thoughts and their processes together. I don't know. Maybe, potentially, right? It's true. And, I don't know. And they're saying – and what they're, what they're saying here in this last paragraph of the article is, is that 50% thermal efficiency is an amazing number. And the only other car – let's just say this. The nearest competitor – to receiving uh, such a high thermal efficiency has been uh, Toyota. They've had 41% uh, thermal efficiency. The next person uh, or company to achieve anything higher than that was Mercedes, but it's in their F1 program, which is nowhere near what mass production uh, that you're going to get on a road vehicle. So the fact that Nissan is coming in and saying, yes, we're giving you thermal efficiency that is equivalent to an F1 vehicle, but you know what? We're providing it to the masses. It is a huge jump. I mean, uh, the last the last episode we had, we talked a lot about how, uh, at least I did, uh, about engines are still going to be around. And I, I, I totally agree with uh, what what's happening with electrification. But it's I, I'm, I'm going to ride the uh, com internal combustion engine wave until I die, man. And articles like these are going to allow people like myself to, to really enjoy that lifestyle. Uh, even though, you know, a lot of electrical cars are coming along the way, you know. So I'd love to see articles like this. Um, super, super efficient, uh, great uh, carbon uh, emissions, super, super low on that. Okay. And um, Nissan is, well, is definitely on the lead on that. We have a lot to go over tonight, so we got to yep. keep the ball rolling. We sure do. So, we sure do. But, yes, great article. Um, mm -hmm. We also have something new that we got to talk about. So Nissan um, actually also has a heritage program that um, is going to start putting out some, uh, some new parts uh, that we had talked about here. Um, yes, you you want to bring up the article for me? Mm -hmm. All right. Well. Uh, so um, apparently, um, and this is kind of more to the point too, where uh, we saw this a while back where Nissan was going to be putting out some uh, performance parts um, for the, uh, the R, uh, all the uh, GTR and the Skyline stuff uh, that yep. was getting pushed out. So 
I think this is more of just kind of playing on that same idea. And um, we kind of knew this before, but now it looks like they're getting into a go for it. Hit it. Yeah. So, sorry. I meant to get you. I'm going to share a video while you talk. <laughs> Not a problem. I was waiting. Yeah. So yeah, it's a pretty impressive stuff to see that they're going to be putting out actual panel replacements. Cause I think originally we were talking about, we're starting to see all the skyline um, uh, blocks and GTRs and some of the, uh, um, the additional uh, parts are being put out. We talked about some of the dots and stuff, and the badging was starting to come back for the Nismo, um, uh, for the Nismo uh, uh, collection stuff. So, yep, yeah, yep. pretty impressive. So, I guess they're starting to measure out all the old panels and putting all that stuff back into production, like we thought they were yep. um, initially. So, yeah, it sounds like everything's kind of moving in the right direction on this. So. Oh, absolutely. The the Nissan Heritage program, uh, just to kind of give you a bit of a background, it began in 2017. And since then, the catalog has uh, been expanded. You know, they began with only about 80 parts uh, for uh, previous model uh, Nissan and Datsun vehicles. That catalog has since increased to over 300 parts. And when you think of vehicles like this, this heritage program, you really can't think about mass production. The volume at which they're making these parts is relatively low. Uh, and there are a lot of challenges with that, specifically how you're going to produce these items. And what you're seeing in this video here is regarding stamped parts, uh, parts that were it's sheet metal being stamped into place. Uh, stamping that operation in general is typically reserved for high volume parts. There's a lot of money invested to do that. But Nissan is coming up with this, uh, what they call a um, uh, di dual sided dialysis forming. And uh, it's allowing these these type of machinery to develop sheet metal at a small scale, which is a huge, huge development, huge, huge um, benefit to us because you know. Yeah, they're just they're they're hand forming everything except for uh, yeah. That's exactly what this is. It's a it's a forming setup. It's just if you've ever done like um, hand forming or design, I kind of I wouldn't say English wheel, but yeah, I mean that's exactly what. Uh, they're kind of doing that right now with the machine. I mean, that's got to be impressive. I wonder if there's some um, some um, uh, there's a fancy term for it, but uh, where the where it goes back and forth. <laughs> uh, 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 articulation. No, uh, right yeah, articulation. That. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Or yeah. So yeah, oh, yeah, I mean that that's pretty impressive, man. I mean, look at that. Yeah, this this product that you're seeing here is specifically regarded the rear panel for the R32 Skyline. Mm -hmm. uh, I. Will you show it uh, below? They that's the, it a, that's the end product. Body panel. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, the fact that uh, – <laughs> I've noticed a trend that I really think Nissan is, is – and I give Nissan tons of credit for this. you got to think about it. They are – they've already said they maintain – that they will always that they'll even the next the future cars are having standard transmissions that is a a, a link to her, that's a that's a link to heritage to their history they have a well funded uh, heritage program developing low volume parts for guys like us that is a huge investment that Nissan should be applauded for uh, and then you got to think about the styling and, and specifically the next generation Z car. They're giving you features of older model Z cars, but with the new technology. It kind of reminds me of like, uh, it sounds kind of crazy though, but you know how a lot of people talk about Dodge in general with the, the Challengers and the, uh, well, maybe not the Chargers, but they're giving to give you that old school styling with modern uh, technology. Like Nissan's kind of following the same, the same formula. And I think it's great. I mean, they're just they're really listening, uh, like we mentioned in these in these focus groups, and giving us what the majority of us want. And um, uh, a, yeah, a lot I think of a lot it of also them. yeah, I think also too. It's like they're it also benefits them to keep these older vehicles on the road. I mean, if they can keep and and they're definitely doing all the flagship vehicles. So, I mean, all these Nismo Heritage parts. Let's call yep. it what it is. They're pretty heavy on the Skyline um, restoration stuff. They are. Uh, especially the R32 stuff right now because they're the oldest ones first. But they're trying to put, uh, you know, the R34 stuff, the production numbers probably aren't there. So it's probably R32 getting into the R33 stuff. And then from here, I don't know what, man. I, but I would be really impressed if Nismo actually put out their own um, floor panels um, if they, for like they say the SR, uh, the S30 stuff, you know, mm -hmm. if they started doing their own versions of like hoods, 
Um, yep. You know, that would be really cool. But again, they're competing with the market. They're the new guys walking into that market at that point, mm-hmm. you know, where nobody else is putting out stamp stuff for R32s. But you know, there is stuff that's stamped out for like the S30. You know, it's uh, there's there's guys that have made that market happen. But who's to say they can't do what what uh, what Nismo has done in the past is where they reach out to whoever has the best product out there and rebadge it as Nismo stuff. You know, why not? You know, if they see it, and it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think they should. I think they should really continue to increase that parts catalog. That's always been one of my biggest yep. um, um, gripes. You know, when it comes to the Nismo name, I, you know me. Uh, it, one of my huge passions is making sure that the Nismo name um, stays strong. So much that I even we we do a show, um, you know, annually about it. You know, I mean, for Christ's sakes. Yes, we do. What, we we try to do our parts to bring up the the Nismo brand because you and I are such fanatical um, people about the actual Nismo brand in Nissan. Um, so. You know, for them not to do uh, for do it service, uh, kind of let it fall by the wayside up until recently, it was kind of sacrilege. But I'm very happy to see this kind of development. And this, you know, for nerds like you and me, it means a huge, uh, a huge thing um, to yeah. get this kind of um, uh, to see this type of, uh, um, uh, I guess, cre- uh, push behind it. You know, finally start getting some finances behind it and be- being able to see them do this stuff. So. Yeah. And I mean, just, just to sum it up here too, I mean, N- Nissan didn't have to do this. They had no reason. They, they, they didn't have to develop a heritage parts program, but they do. I mean, they're, they're still providing uh, support from the factory for, uh, for a lot of these older vehicles. I mean, I definitely should be applauded. I, I really yeah. like the fact that they're doing this. Um, uh, they're, they're, they're taking care of us. I mean, I, I really feel like for, for those who, who are at Nissan, the ones that have, uh, that haven't left us, they, they are, they're enthusiasts themselves. We know for a fact that, uh, it was a Hiroshi, uh, Tamura, Tamura san He's a, he's a skyline guy. He, he's an owner. He's been a fan. He has a 600 horsepower skyline in his garage. So it kind of goes to show that they, Nissan, even at an executive level, they do have executives uh, that are enthusiasts. And I'll, and I'll say this with this new with the new tooling option, you know, it really makes it makes everything available for being able to do that. I mean, um, I will say this. I'm I've been kind of curious because I've heard a rumor and Uh-oh. and I've heard this on the Japanese side and I've heard on the US side that Nissan's been collecting um, clean versions of old models for development. And, and I thought it was a rumor. I thought it was like, you know, aliens are out there, you know, that kind of stuff, (laughs) you know, uh, there's a, what is it? There's a, there's a a secret space station underneath the Colorado airport. Uh, you know, I, like, I thought it was speculation of wild rumor, but you know, if tooling like this exists, why can't redevelopment, um, be for those cars, be for those enthusiast cars are out there. People are willing to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, and the parts can be made. Why not? I mean, it'll be wildly overly. Uh, hopefully, it won't be wildly over expensive and it's cost effective. Yep. I mean, why not? If you told me that I could pick up a Nismo um, uh, floor pan for something versus you know trying to trying my hand at some garbage sheet <laughs> metal that finding it out of uh, Thailand is it Thailand where a lot of the yeah old parts I mean metal, just all kinds of crap thin. that's coming out yeah, it's just garbage yeah. you know that's yeah. the big thing you try to tell somebody that there's quality pans and stuff that's out there and people yeah. buy them I mean hell I would I mean it's a no it's no contest but that's me I buy quality stuff so. Yep. Anyway, all right. Yep. Let's move on. Yes, we got yes. a lot. We got more news to cover, and we're... we've got two more stories for you guys. And yeah. I'll go ahead and start the next one. Let's go ahead and try to knock these out in sixty seconds or less. What do you think about those? Hit me. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Next one from the Nissan uh, News uh, Channel, NissanNews.com. We're talking about the Frontier, and they're saying how the uh, the Nissan Frontier is the top midsize pickup. In 2021, from JD Power uh, Association regarding vehicle dependability, and to kind of give you a sum up on this, what obviously we know that JD Power comes around and they keep dependability studies not only for initial 
uh, impression on a brand new vehicle, but they long after the vehicle's been sold, they check in with their customers, with the owners of these vehicles to get their feedback. So uh, what they did is that as, as part of this study was they approached customers who have bought the uh, 2018 Nissan Frontier, a three-year-old vehicle at this point, and asked for their feedback. And they really score these uh, these vehicles, uh, the Frontier and, and its competitors. So in this case, you you, you have the, the Tacoma uh, and a bunch, bunch of other uh, mid-sized pickups. And they're scoring them as problems per 100 vehicles. And um, uh, glad to say that for a third year in a row, Nissan has placed first in this competition, uh, in this study from J.D. Power, and have received the award for the uh, most dependable mid-sized pickup uh, as part of their study. So uh, if you have a, a, a late, uh, late model, a recent model Frontier. 10 seconds. You're doing great. I hope you enjoy your vehicle. These vehicles are made in Mississippi, and uh, a lot of uh, props to Nissan for, for maintaining quality. How about that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you right. have this next one, Miles. This is the last story we have as far as news, don't we? Yeah, this is our last one for the night. Well, one of them. So One of them. All right. So uh, the new news on the flagship market is the Nissan yep. Rogue. So Nissan's messing around with the option for doing a turbo. Calm down before you get too excited. <laughs> Three-cylinder. So, or excuse me, the, yeah. So that's what we're looking at. A 1.5 liter turbo three. So the big gripe that's always been with the Nissan Rogue is the fact that it's not keeping up with the miles per gallon competition um, that's out there. So you got like the Honda CRV. Uh, I, I'm trying to think who else is, uh, is fighting with these guys. RAV4 just to, RAV4, to yeah. fight against Toyota, which is the number one uh, competitor against the Nissan. So uh, they were, those guys were fighting in the 40 mile per gallon um, uh, corner of the market. Um, Nissan caused, wasn't quite hidden. I think there were this one was the original Rogue was or the most recent Rogue was coming in at around uh, 30, 33, um, 30 miles yep. per gallon, 37 highway. So it wasn't quite hitting what it wants. So apparently this new engine, if it if it is going to be pulled the trigger on, hasn't been official yet, um, is going to give them what they're looking for. Nissan's downplaying it right now um, from what this article and a number of other articles were talking about. Mm -hmm. So um, they're thinking that this might be what they're going to be looking for. So the 1.5 liter Turbo 3 will come in front or all-wheel drive and has the same continuously variable automatic transmissions as the 2.5. So, so no redesign, Blech. just... Take the plant, match it up to the old training, boom, <laughs> and there you go. So probably get some redesigns and touch-ups and new fancy belt buckles and leather and blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, for mm -hmm. the most part, the Rogue is the number one seller um, for Nissan right now. So why wouldn't they give another engine option uh, for the uh, for the kind of box? So. Absolutely. And they're replacing the 2.5-liter four-cylinder with the naturally aspirated yeah which is the QR25. And, and historically, that engine has been very, very uh, reliable. It's been used in a number of vehicles. Oh, I know the Sentra gets it, for example. But uh, they are going on to this more fuel-efficient drivetrain, and so they they're adding, they're adding the fuel efficiency. That is. So you have an efficient engine, use it in a particular platform. If it sells well, what are you going to do? You're going to expand the market. So that means yep. you're going to see it potentially in your Sentras. You're going to see it dropped into your uh, Versa? Are there so many of them? Uh, Versa. Uh, I mean, what do you think about the uh, – that, that, that is a Versa, go. yeah. Let's talk here. Here's the Rogue. Here's everything yeah. below it. Econo box. Yeah. That's everything that's going to see it. Could so, you see it – would you see it in a Juke? What do you think about that? <sighs> yeah, why not? I mean, why not? <laughs> but the problem is you, uh, it's been so crazy as of late. Like I could see something like this coming out, and then yeah. it's just been like, okay – uh, economy combustion, economy combustion, uppercut with the EV. And you're just like, dude, uh, like I, I, right now it's so crazy. If you're one of those people shopping consumerism, yep. like co shopping consumer reports, cause you don't know, I hate to say it. You don't know which way is up with Nissan right now. I wish, uh, you know, you don't know if that, um, it, it's not a bad thing. It's just that you don't know what's happening with the combustion stuff. You don't know if the EVs around all the electronic stuff is around the corner. I mean, 
I don't know. I, I don't know what to think with any of that stuff. But I can tell you right now, anything that you purchase that is a Nissan Rogue or is a Sentra or is a Versa, they're they're not bad cars. They're amazing cars because they're they're uh, kept up to be competitive. So the gas mileage is there. All everything as far as all the standards are up, and everything's hitting where it needs to be. But the big thing with me is like, you know, I'm waiting for all the revolutionary. I'm waiting for the 2022 year. Quite me personally. Okay. Um, I, I'm waiting for the 400Z to come out. I'm waiting for all yep. the new engine platforms to be kind of set in stone um, yeah. and just kind of go there. But I can tell you everything that Nissan's putting out right now has been solid, you know, um, in this last year. They're making solid decisions because we've talked about this. They were just kind of getting everything lined up before the uh, um, before COVID hit. They had to deal with all this drama that was happening with the company and they had to make yep. sure that they had a nice solid base, you know. Oh, yeah, go ahead. That's fine. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna drop a bomb for you in we're, a minute. We're not gonna we're, go too long tonight. We're running over, but yeah, yeah, this is gonna be uh, it's gonna be our extended version. I'm pretty sure we got another eh, twenty. Yeah, whatever it is, what it is. Yeah, go for it. Let's go for it. You want to move on next up to the next segment here? You go, go, go. All right. Uh, next segment here is our typical uh, motorsports updates, and uh, per Nissan's recent um, announcement, there are a few main pillars of their motorsports program. We're going to share a few. Uh, specifically tonight, we're going to share with you about their Formula E program, uh, and then we've got a few more, uh, just a few friendly reminders about their other main uh, uh, development program, which is the GT, G, Super GT class. So, uh, get into motorsports. Let me go ahead and share my screen real quick. I'm just going to let this run in the background. Uh, Formula E. Must, this is, uh, I want to recap round one and round two of uh, Formula E. And I believe this is Nissan's uh, third year in Formula E. Uh, we spoke about this in the last episode. And I really made a commitment to, to, keep, to continue to follow uh, Formula E this year. So, uh, if it's cool with you, man, I want to really give you my impressions. For it, for those of you watching that may have never seen anything related to Formula E, I kind of want to give you my own uh, little recap. Is that cool with you? Please do. So before we talk about Nissan's performance, I want to just kind of give you my impressions about Formula E in general. Uh, the way this operates, uh, as you can see here, uh, a typical race is not based on laps, but based on time. So a typical race is 45 minutes plus one lap. That's how they uh, they judge their races. Now, if you compare that to typical races like like actual F1 or uh, the, the typical uh, F, uh, F1 series, um, a little different. Um, you know, there's less use of, uh, of, of pit stops. There's not really much of a need to, um, to, to have a tire strategy. Typically, uh, the life of the tires will last, uh, in this case, 45 minutes. Their top speed is about 170 miles an hour, which is really, really good. I mean, typical F1 is about comparatively about 200 horse, 200 miles per hour. So they're they're still reaching some very, very high numbers. And um, and you can see here uh, on the left. Can you see on the left here? You, of course, you have your 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 position, uh, your position of the racers. Eventually, you do see here. You know when you have a cell phone and it tells you your percentage of power left. You get the same thing in F in Formula E. They tell you which car has so much power left. And when, when we say they have a 45-minute uh, race plus one lap, they are literally using every piece of energy stored in that car. Uh, when they when they uh, end these races, most cars have 1% to 2% of power left, which uh, induces a lot of anxiety, man. I'm watching this thing. And they're showing that these cars have 1% uh, of, of power left over. Ooh, look at that. Ouch. Um, it, it really induces anxiety, man. Like, it, it's, it's actually pretty fun to watch. I'll, I'll tell you that much. But uh, it, it, has, it definitely is different from F1. There's a lot of other features here. But uh, if you are interested in Formula E, I highly encourage it. Uh, get it into Nissan, though. Rounds one and round two took place in Saudi Arabia. Uh, these two races happened uh, back to back. Uh, there were two days straight of nothing but races. For Nissan's performance, though, in round one, uh, they've got their two drivers, uh, Oliver Rowland and Sebastian Buemi. Uh, Oliver qualified 10th and finished 6th. 
in the first round. And uh, Buemi qualified 17th and finished in 13th. So they both made a, uh, a significant jump uh, with their when they finished. So uh, props to them on that. Getting into round two, the second night. And these are night races. This was actually the first uh, set of night races that Formula E has ever had. So it was really, really fun to see. Uh, getting into the second race, so uh, Oliver Rollin qualified 13th and finished 9th place. And Sebastian Buemi, he qualified 8th. But unfortunately, there was an accident that he was involved of, involved with, and uh, he did not finish uh, with the second round. Uh, uh, did not finish. And uh, because of that accident, actually, the entire race ended about two minutes early. Um, so, uh, again, but congrats to uh, the team. Uh, unfortunately, in that second round, Buemi did not make it. But uh, it's just the beginning of the 2021 season for Formula E. Uh, the next race, uh, round three, happens in May. It's quite a jump. It's three months away. May 21st and May 22nd, Formula E will be will have their uh, third round in Marrakesh. So uh, I'll, we will, of course, follow the, 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 F, the Formula E season and give you guys results as they come in. Very good. How's that work? Right. That's a little recap there. There you go. Yeah. That was a pretty solid recap. Good job. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> you did a really good job. So, I really um, enjoyed it. <laughs> so for those that don't know, over the last, um, I guess this was last weekend, right? Wasn't it? Um, so Super Lab Battle happened here at Let's... Coda, Circuit of the Americas. Is that right? Um, yeah, see Super Lap Battle was yeah. just uh, this last weekend. Yeah, uh, just this weekend. Uh, Man, everything's blending together. So, yeah, yeah Super Lap Battle. Most time out there. I was there actually for Friday, yeah. Saturday, and Sunday. A really great event for those that don't know what it was. Um, they actually hosted uh, this in our neck of the woods, actually, with uh, Circuit of the Americas. And um, uh, the event was uh, over a two day period. Um, it hosted actually a drifting event. And then, of course, it hosted uh, Grid Life and it uh, hosted. Um, uh, excuse me, Super Lap Battle itself. Now, um, one thing I did want to talk about was uh, let me go ahead and get the reins here, Mike. Sure, sure, go ahead. Um, go ahead. I went ahead and I went ahead and uh, covered the event, or I should say, I covered it, and uh, we talked a little bit about what was happening that day. But we were nice enough to meet up with uh, a Mr. Brian Highcotter. Um, Brian yep. actually uh, was approached by uh, Chris Forsberg, and for those that you don't know. I'm not even going to waste my time explaining it to you because Chris <laughs> is amazing, really nice dude, huge Nissan enthusiast, and a drift legend. So um, he was uh, nice enough to, well, he reached out to Mr. Brian Highcotter to get him to drive their new 370Z um, at Grid Life. Um, so Brian had given me a, a heads up a few days before, said, hey, guess what, man? I'm going to be there. I was like, dude, can't wait to see you. Boom, I'll see you there. So yeah. uh, for those that don't know, Brian Highcotter is an amazing, and I, I do mean this, he's an amazing driver. Um, he actually ended up uh, winning the GT Academy uh, championship. He was the first American champion um, that came on that. He went on to do an amazing three, uh, amazing uh, racing career, still is racing um, and doing a lot of amazing things, but on a yeah. virtual platform, on a sim race, that guy is legend, all right? But he uh, he actually ended up racing the GT3 cars uh, for Nissan and Nismo. Uh, this is his Facebook page, and he's just – the guy's amazing. I absolutely love him. He's salt of the earth kind of dude. In virtual racing, though, he's done grid life iRacers. He's won <laughs> everything he's ever touched on a virtual. So, again, if you don't know who he is, uh, get familiar. Great guy to know. But I actually ended up running on hit into him and Chris Forsberg. At Super Lap Battle, um, they had a really good weekend, running really strong. Um, you know, here he is. Uh, that's Brian with uh, Chris Forsberg doing some photo ops. I actually just put my camera right over the shoulder <laughs> of the uh, of the poor guy doing the Super Lap promo stuff. Kind yeah, of like, yeah. I guess I don't know what you could do. Porn pornograph. I mean, you're just kind of right there. And the guy was like, dude, just get off my back. Like, for real. I'm like, I was like, for real. I was like, let me just take these photos. But Brian was nice enough to uh, glad hand. Um, here's his pit crew. 
And uh, yeah, they came out with an impressive vehicle. They ran really strong all week. Um, really had uh, a good time running. Uh, there's our boy, Josh. Yeah, it's a Toyota. Don't judge it too much. Josh is a Datsun nerd. But uh, for those that had an opportunity to go out, um, it was uh, it was a really good event. Uh, this was, um, for those that don't know, the legend, uh, Mike Kojima. Uh, he was out there doing race support for this uh, STI that was out there. Sure so. was. But uh, yeah, we had a we had a really great time. Um, I was out there for most of the day. Um, the drift sessions were pretty impressive, pretty Nissan strong. Um, the Grid Life uh, also hosted a car show that was out there. Um, I had an opportunity to kind of get around there. A lot of pretty rare uh, birds that were out there, considering it's COVID right now. Yeah, a lot of people showed up um, for an event. I, you know, I. I thought this event was going to be just jammed and it was really packed, but I think people are still kind of getting leery of it, but coming out of COVID, I'm starting to feel comfortable attending car shows, attending car events. Yeah. And I really had a good time uh, going to, uh, uh, to this event. Super lap battle made a very good event. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah. And you actually had an opportunity to show up on Sunday. So I did. I showed it. up on Sunday. Uh, I had a great time. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you, uh, I did get some some time to actually watch the racing happen, but I'll, I'll admit the majority of the time I was there was really in a social setting. When you walk the garages, and uh, it, it is, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, it's not like F1, you know, when, of course, there there is a, a velvet rope in between the racers and the teams and the spectators. Not so much with, with events like these. So you can literally walk into the garage and, and shake the hand and talk with uh, the racers of these cars. And, and that's exactly what we did. Uh, tons. I met a lot, a lot of new people. Uh, getting kind of their impressions of uh, you know of the drivers and 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 how they drove specifically with Nissan cars. We met quite a few 370Z uh, owners that were racing their cars um, uh, at Coda that that weekend, and um, it it actually I wasn't really able to recap the event until I saw it on YouTube. Sadly enough, but <laughs> it just goes to show how sociable the event was. I mean, we we literally spent the entire time walking. Again, through the garages, through the car show, talking with enthusiasts. Oh, and, you got uh, kicked out. Really great time. <laughs> you got kicked out. Let, well, uh, yeah. So, uh, so Mike had a um, <laughs> a lady that apparently he decided not to get a ba uh, like a badge that he paid for. Yeah. Um, when we first got there, and then um, the lady that ran the uh, the track uh, ran the track or ran the. Uh, um, the, <laughs> she was, was the, the security the, guard running the she garage. She was the security yeah. paddock. She yeah. hated Mike. She could not stand him. I so she did. followed. I she followed so him around. She told him, "Like, look, I don't like you. You don't like me. <laughs> Just get out of here." And um, but I will say this though: um, after about the fifth time, um, she <laughs> got, you know she kind of got tired of uh, chasing him around. But yeah, here's a. Uh, uh, Chris For Forsberg kind of showing off his new baby. Brian was nice enough to talk about the car. Um, of course, we were all car nerds just drooling over the car the entire time. But again, you know, kudos to Chris Forsberg. Kudos to Brian Heikotter. Very cool dudes. Very nice guys. Very, very much racers at the heart of them. And uh, I was really impressed with the vehicle. I, I just, you know, it. I'm going to say this again, and for those that are looking to get a good, solid race car, the 370Z, man, I'm telling you, uh, just out of the box, it's it's a good car to just throw some tires on, throw some brake pads, and go out there and see what you got. It is one of those cars that can really um, put you to the test as a driver, in, in my opinion. It is. So. I, I absolutely agree with you, too. Um, and, and, and also in naturally aspirated form, I mean, y you don't have to supercharge or turbocharge one of these things to be essentially competitive. You know, when you've got the certain classing or racing classes that there are, you are still competitive. Uh, we spoke with, uh, what was his name? John Wheeler, who had a 370Z yeah. and he placed, I think, second and aside, it was still naturally aspirated, but when he had the typical bolt-ons, differential brakes and, and whatnot, I mean, he was still very competitive and the car looked great. It performed great. So, I mean, yeah. 
super nice guy is. too. They were just some guys out for a nice HPDE weekend. I mean, Super Live Battle is an amazing HPDE. I mean, I'm I'm gonna try to get one of my cars up for that. I mean, just, just I would love to as well. Just to say I did it. I mean, it's such an amazing uh, uh, weekend, and the background's amazing. I mean, at a certain point, we were sitting there with uh, uh, Mr. Wheeler that we just mentioned from the 370Z. We're just like, there's a huge gigantic screen that's in front of us, and we're just like watching all the uh all the bad boys go out there and race and we're just like all right we're just sitting there and it's like oh he's a turn nine he's a turn you can't get that experience anywhere else but again for those that don't know check out super life uh super lap battle check out grid life a uh, yep. great event you need to go and check it out um again I, I cannot even say enough about uh the experience that me and mike had so um yeah. i agree I agree, man. Uh, great time, man. I, I, great time spending time with you as usual, Miles. I know uh, um, a, a lot of the times that we get together physically, like just at the shows and everything else, like in Austin there at Coda, uh, it's a good time hanging out with great you backdrop. guys. Yeah. Yeah, so, great and, time. And great, great friends and great backdrop. I had a blast. We got to meet up with um, Ion Dasgupta, who's one of our, our followers of the event, Rob yep. Curtis from Against the Grain. Um, he came out and hang, hung out with us. I mean, we, all the guys, Rick Frost and all the guys, uh, all the boys out of Corpus, uh, Stan Salazar and, uh, the rest of the clan out of that group. Um, yep. so again, it was great seeing all of you. I would love to see more of you. Um, me and Mike are definitely going to try to hit more motorsports events as we continue on from there. So. Absolutely, man. So again, great time. Uh, Super Lap Battle has no signs of ending, so look forward in 2022, uh, right around this time. And uh, I look forward to being there again next year. How about you, Miles? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, that is uh, Super Lap Battle. Just wrapping up motorsports update. There was two other friendly reminders that uh, we are definitely keeping our eyes on with Nissan's involvement in motorsports. Uh, the first one being Super GT. We know that Nissan is super involved in their GT300 and GT500 classes. Uh, racing in that league doesn't begin until April. So just a reminder, uh, as we get closer to the date, we'll be sure to go ahead and give you more updates on that. And the same thing happens with the Centra Cup uh, and or what you call the Micra Cup out of Canada. Yeah. Their league begins in May. So May. we definitely have our eyes on it and we'll be providing you with the best updates uh, as the, uh, the results come in uh, yeah. later this year. Yeah. 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 Anything so, special we got to talk about, Mike, um, before we start wrapping up the events and getting the last pieces up, anything else we got to go over? You know, we've got maybe two more things and I know we can wrap it up very, very quickly. And I wanted to <laughs> share with you, uh, and I'm not sure if you saw this though, but, uh, there was, uh, the, uh you're a book collector, right? Miles, you like to collect N Nissan dots. Yeah, I can't really read. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I saw something and really this is something that, you know, it's a segment that we call things you should be checking out. You remember this, right? Yeah, 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 I course. think you invented it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember it now that I've said it. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So uh, as part of this segment, though, Miles, I did want to share with you uh, something from me anyway. And it is regarding a book. Uh, for those who are interested in uh, knowing more about Nissan history and specifically Datsun history, uh, there is a book coming out. Specifically, this is an e-book. So, uh, again, not, not a physical book, but you can get your hands on it digitally. And uh, the book is called The Stainless Steel Carrot. Oh, and yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm familiar now, with I, it. Yeah. So, so – I you know, we, we were, I think we were talking about this just before the show. I'm I'm not as familiar with it, so to me, it's it's really really cool to see though. But uh, to kind of give you a uh, an idea about this book, the Stainless Steel Carrot uh, kind of follows John Morton and the BRE team, uh, the Brock Racing Enterprises team, yep. uh, during 1971, 1972 at the SCCA Trans American Sedan Championships. This is right. the time that Brock Morton was the driver behind the BRE Datsun 510. And uh, there was a journalist that was in the paddocks um, yeah. working this documenting yeah. physically there at that time. And they had developed this book. Uh, and the book, again, is called The Stainless Steel Carrot. Uh, this is not a new book. This book was released, uh, you know, decades ago. Is that what you say? Decades ago. But uh, 
it was very the 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 physical book production and 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 prints yeah. was very very limited yeah, uh, when in you certain these... circles yeah in certain mm-hmm. circles they were really hard to come by um for a long time you couldn't it was pretty hard to get a copy i actually yeah. didn't even acquire a copy till i got god i want to say san diego zeke convention um was when we got the chance to see um morton and yep. um and Brock uh, together yep. Yep. Uh, because they live so close to that event. They came out to the event and I want to say uh, Miss Morton was there. And then Sylvia Wilkinson was uh, um, made an appearance or somehow they were offering this book. And that's yep. actually when I picked up a copy of it, it had Morton and Brock sign it. And oh. I, I read it shortly after and it's insightful. I mean, it, it, it again, there was somebody that was there present yeah. in the moment at the time who was documenting everything and yep. and writing down that piece of history that was going on at the time i mean it's it, it, you're not going to get that from any other place i mean you can get it from coffee table books if you could lucky to acquire them but there's nothing mm-hmm. of this caliber and trust me i have the book and i've had it for yeah. some time but for those that don't have it this is an opportunity for you to pick up the e-version of it because trying to obtain the regular version uh, i remember seeing them on ebay yeah. and they, were going, they were going for rec- redonkulous prices and i was like yeah so i and when i paid it i was like i remember i bought it and it was like it wasn't cheap i bought it and i was like hey, i'm a nerd i'm on vacation i'll buy it boom and i bought yeah. it and then i had it signed so for me it was like a double win but you know, for those that didn't have the opportunity, I remember seeing it. And I was like, oh, I don't want to pay the price of God. I remember last time I saw it, it was like 150 and somebody was like, dude, that's a steal. You got to buy it, bro. And I'm like, mm. but I didn't realize how good it was. And I will say something to the testament of somebody who actually owns it. Yeah. It is worth the purchase. I don't know how much the ebook's going for. I'll let you finish it out. But yes. yeah, it, it, I do. Hi- I would say I highly recommend it. So. Absolutely. Like you said, the hardcover versions of this book go for super high numbers. Uh, they range up to about $300 for this book <laughs> there you physically. Go. I, yeah. I yeah. Know. It's insane. So, oh, uh, yeah. 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 but they are just now um, reserving, they're doing a pre order on the ebook on this, and, and you can get it for $9.99. Nice. $10, dude. You're getting this book for $10 as an ebook. So, uh, Granted, I know a lot of us are, uh, you know, we love to have it in our hand, but to at least tangible, yeah, yeah, but to be able to, uh, to, to at least read it at less than a than less than 10% of, you know, 90% off, more than 90% off the, the cover price just to read it, uh, digitally, throw it on your Kindle, throw it on your tablet, it's a great deal. So, uh, this is definitely something that I wanted to share with you guys if you are interested in it. Oh, there um... is a site here and I'll go ahead and throw the link in the show notes and uh, it will have a, a link to go ahead and reserve this book. So essentially uh, it's on pre-order and uh, when it comes out, you will receive it. So uh, definitely keep a lookout and follow us. We'll go ahead and send you the link in the episode notes. And uh, Very cool. that's what I have to share. Miles, did you have anything? No, that's- no, that that's a really that's a really cool find. Um, Josh wanted to comment real quick. Oh, uh, going back to um, uh, the Nissan Engineer Academy, the GT three hundred. Yeah. Josh, we know they won the championship last year because I was we were praising them so much. But yes, <laughs> a good find nonetheless. Good kudos to you, Josh, for bringing it up. Yeah, those guys worked really hard. That was actually the college. I don't even have to look it up. The Nissan uh, College <laughs> Academy guys. And, you know, I, I wish there was more of a story there that I could actually pull. Like, mm-hmm. I would love to hear, like, the the beating heart kind of story, if you will. Um, <laughs> about, you, know, you know what I mean by when I say that? Like, I, I would like to hear, like, you know, um, uh, the background, if there was a group of, like, young engineers that were like looking to prove their point like to me it just like it screams like um you know uh, rea- uh, you know a mo- uh, uh, something that uh, a real event that's made into a movie like i would love yeah. that you know what i mean like it, it, i feel like there's a story there but again yep. you know i haven't touched it but yeah it, it, it i, I 
it, there's definitely probably something that's that's amazing there that you know nobody's tapped into. But yeah, I'd like to hear something about that. But I don't know. Anyway. Maybe it'll be the next uh, the same team that made Ford versus Ferrari will come around and do a docu- <laughs> They'll do a documentary on the BRE team or something I don't know. like that. It was or pretty. Super it was, GP. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty epic. But I mean, still, you know. It's like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I've got nothing else to cover. I say we just, uh, let's do events. Uh, let's do some, some sharing. How are you doing? How am I doing? And then we'll call it. So (laughs) we'll go ahead and get into events. This is one of our last segments of tonight's show. Again, for those of you that are on Facebook live, thank you for being here. Feel free to jump into the comments and we'll be sure to, uh, interact with the comments that you have. And let's Uh, wrap it up. We're getting a little long in the two tonight. Yeah, we are. We are. So. We'll make this one short and sweet. Uh, regarding events happening within the Nissan Infinity and Datsun world, um, you know, Miles, I know uh, we always check our uh, our inboxes to see whether or not we've gotten more invites. Uh, again, for those of you that are listening to us, if you have an event or you know an event that is uh, of a Nissan uh, uh, festival, uh, Send it to us. We want to definitely promote for you and pro- provide more um, yeah. awareness for your event. But uh, as far as what we have for you tonight, we have uh, three events for you. Uh, we've mentioned them in the past, but we'll go ahead and say it again. There are three events happening this year, 2021, that we'll share with you. The first one is happening in May, uh, late May, in the North Carolina region. And this is uh, Z Days. And, of course, Z-Days is happening. I believe this is their 18th year happening. This is about a uh, is it five days now. It's a five-day event mm-hmm. that uh, is just a huge uh, – at this point, it's become a family reunion for Z enthusiasts uh, in that part of the country. Uh, Z-Days happening. If you go to zdays.com, they'll tell you more about what's happening on the day-to-day, and you can also register uh, at the event. This year is a new location that they are using uh, previously, literally the last 17 or 16 years has been at the Fontana village uh, right near the uh, tail of the dragon. This year is a different location. So if you do want to know more Z days.com uh, Z days, days with the Z.com. Yeah. Highly recommend. Definitely check it out. Um, yep. Now um, next we actually have uh, Branson Z fence. Uh, yes. So Branson Z fence is uh, popping off and obviously it happens in Branson, Missouri every year. Um, yep. June 2nd to June 6th. Uh, you can check more out about it on Branson Z um, This is how many years they've been doing this now, Mike? Oh, this one is definitely up there. I mean, it, it's, I want to say it's at least 10. Okay. Ish. Yeah. But for those that have not attended again, highly recommend, um, very good event. Um, very, very friendly event from what I've uh, been told. Um, you and me have been talking about going to this event for some yes. time. I need to go yeah. and just check it out. One of these days we'll be there. Um, you yeah. and I though, this next event, uh, yep. we have definitely on our list. You and I have every intention of going, assuming that there's no other drama that pops out on 2021, <laughs> but the 34th annual Z convention, uh, which is happening in Colorado Springs, Colorado this year, August 16th to August 21st. You can check more about that out at zcon.org. Um, I think right now, are they pushing anything for early bird right now? They are. Uh, as far as the deadline, I believe it is April 1st. Uh, don't quote me on that. I believe that's a okay. relative number, though. But the sooner that you get online and register, you can guarantee savings at registration. And I believe that's typically um, – I think it's like at least 15, 15 Yeah, it's bucks. always a good deal to get in on the early bird stuff too. So, yeah, yeah. I, I I actually need to register here soon and, and get in so on So do it. I. It's going to be a good event. We're both going. You know yep. that we're traveling together along with the, the clan of other Nissan nerds, so it should be pretty fun. Yep. So, yeah. And and just to show a few events, though, man, I was actually looking at this. And for those – you can see in my screen, I believe. Uh, there is a group drive to Pikes Peak. Um, that, to me, is something that I definitely want to do. It's a guided tour uh, up there. bunch of Zs finding their way to the top of the mountain. That's awesome. Of course, you got your car shows. There is a special evening at the Flying W Ranch. You see a picture there. Very, very scenic. A really good night planned uh, for those who attend. There is a raceway uh, track day and relatively affordable, 250 on that one. Those Of all the events that happen at Z-Days, the track day is the first event to sell out first. So if yes. you're remotely thinking 
you need to jump on this as quickly Buy as possible. Buy the day. Buy it and just don't even think about it and then get to it later on. Trust get it me. done with. Uh, autocross, there is also drag racing. There's a People's Choice Car Show. Uh, I believe it's a six-day event this year. Uh, of course, this is the 34th annual. These guys, the, the organizers, are no strangers to putting on a great events. Uh, I... I I, I plan on being there, Miles. Provide, like you, like you said, any uh, future we're catastrophic there. events. We're, we're going. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I'm gonna just book my time, and we'll go, and we'll have a good time, and then, you know, we'll party like rock stars, like we always do. And um, Zcon's we'll always a time to let loose, so, isn't it? Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll change lives and uh, and wreck marriages like we always do. <laughs> we'll, we'll wreck do, marriages. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so there's always uh unfortunately we always uh taint a few souls at every Zcon. So we'll Oh, we do. It Intentionally. I mean, I I walk every time I've gone to a Zcon, I've always taken some sort of uh I will give you an example. I've brought tasers, I've brought fireworks, fireworks. I've brought handcuffs. Mm -hmm. I've brought an mm -hmm. I mean, that's just that's just the tip of the iceberg, man. There it, it really is at least for uh, the guys in our area has Zcon has always been an excuse to uh, play pranks on one another. So uh, I think, well, you know, I no different. What have I done to you over the years? I put your phone number. On... You put my phone number on. Uh, what was it? Uh, it may have been Craigslist at the time. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. There was else, uh, fly uh... flyers where y'all were advertising. Oh, me I, as uh, a, as I a... advertised you as a uh, a male stripping deal. Yes, and it, that was in Phoenix 2012, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, put your phone number on that one where we superimposed your... Uh, they put my face... On, hey, granted, I was flattered, man, to see uh, my you face... Look good. With some, you look with good. Some, You're rocking the six-pack abs. Yeah. 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 I was almost good, flattered dude. on that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of hitability <laughs> there. A lot of people would hit it. So my actual phone number was on that flyer, so I did get some calls. Oh yeah, I don't I don't mess around. Yeah, you're getting that's it's part of the problem of being my friend. I hold nothing. Yeah. Back, so absolutely. Uh, what else did we do? I feel like we shaved somebody's um, head. Uh, what else did we do? Um, we I, broke it. I, we like to break into people's hotel rooms and um, and like yeah. uh, loosen faucet knobs, take all the light bulbs out of rooms. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? I done? I remember no. I broke into somebody's room and I took all their light bulbs and then we put them in the refrigerator. Is that right? <laughs> uh, what else did we the do? Freezer. Yeah. I did one with uh, with you guys, and again, in my mind, it, it was going to work perfectly, but it did not. Remember, we had the uh, the bathroom. There was a public bathroom, like bathroom stalls, multiple bathroom stalls. Mm. Uh, yeah, and my cool. what I did, I was throwing black cats underneath. Like, what are you going to do? You, are you going to run out of the shower naked? No, like, you're not, I was you're not. the person that got the black hats. I remember that. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. But, it, but the problem with you is, like, you laugh uh, heinously so before you get to, to do your event because you can't hold in your actual guilty uh, laughter. So you're yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right. So I had my hand on my ears waiting for this firework to come out and blow my toes off. And yeah. so here I am, you know, talking to Jesus on the porcelain throne for like four seconds. And then you're just like, let's see a firework come over. Bam. I'm like, all right, maybe he doesn't have a backup. And there was another one like, where I had a black cat, but the fuse was really short. Oh, you blew your finger off. Show it. Show yeah, I had it like literally at my ear. And as I threw it, pop. Mm, yeah, you and, were And uh, I had a ringing in the ears. I think I still do, honestly. Oh, so. yeah. You probably are, shoot. You probably have some kind of uh, 10 nights. But Z-Con in general is always a great is time. Is always a you fun time. Friends. You can make it yeah. as fun as you want to. But, yeah, we've always had a great time. We can't promote that enough. Um, but all the events out there are great. Um, yep. You know, get out there. <sighs> we're digging ourselves out of the hole that has been the yep. nightmare that we live in. Please continue to stay safe. Wear your masks. Uh, Texas, we have a bit of a weird thing going on where you don't have to wear masks, but they need uh, – we're not going to get into that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, um, you know, continue to stay safe. Continue to stay uh, out there because we love our Z community. We love everybody out there. We want to make sure that you guys are safe, that your families are safe. And um, we cannot um, say enough how we would rather see you safe – and alive, then yep. maybe not see you this year. So again, um, continue to uh, support the community in whichever ways you can. Commu 
continue to support us if you can. Yeah. And then by watching us and, um, you know, I think that's everything, man. I, you know, Mike, yeah. on a good note, that's positive energy, positive love. Yep. I'm going to send it to you with your sunburnt self. And we're going to continue <laughs> to uh, um, uh, put a plan in together to do another one of these things here soon. So absolutely uh to wrap it up here guys again always find us at uh our contact nissan nerd info at nissan nerd.com again we want to definitely this is a community outreach for you guys if you're looking for anybody to promote your event no matter where you're at let us know we want to share it with you and uh, uh again uh we want to definitely see you safe and healthy and also at these events that we promote uh and we will be there so uh aside from that miles i believe you've whatever you have left oh, come by. by. I got a little yeah. bit left. Yeah, come by. Yeah. Blink. Uh, Woo! <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. <sighs> Go home. We're done. Oh. I'm not. Get, go. Get out of here. Go, go. <laughs> <sighs> no more news. I'm done. Get, done. Go. Did we do enough for you already? Oh, Jesus. Always. You want everything. You take and you take. And <laughs> you, you, take. you take and you take and you never <sighs> give. <sighs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> All right, Miles. I'll see you, buddy. Awesome. Again, Bye. thanks, everybody, for being here. Bye. Stay strong. Mm-hmm.